Hi, this is the chapter 3 overview video. Chapter 3 dynamics finally deals with the cause of motion by introducing the idea of force and Newton's laws. Newton's three laws of motion give a simple description of nature that is universally true at speeds much less than speed of light when it comes to moving things. You should read about each law in sections 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4, but this is how we summarize them. Newton's first law is also called law of inertia. It says that an object remains in its state of motion, or non-motion, unless acted on by an external force. Newton's second law, or F equals MA, relates how acceleration is given by the net force on an object. This is the connection between forces, push and pull, and acceleration that we talked about in kinematics. I prefer to call Newton's third law, law of interaction. It describes how if two objects interact with each other through force, the forces always come in a pair of forces, which are called action and reaction forces. Newton's third law is the most often misunderstood law, so we will dedicate an essay assignment to make sure you have some time to clear up any misunderstandings and observe a correct application of Newton's third law. The rest of the chapter is spent on describing different types of forces. There is the normal force, sometimes called support force, and it is the most common one in everyday experience as it describes nearly all contact forces. Spring force is something we are going to spend more time on later. In chapter 3, we simply introduce Hooke's law and leave it there. Sometimes we call the spring force restoring force because this characteristic is not exclusive to springs spring. You are probably aware of friction. Separating out, effect of friction was important in developing the idea of inertia. You see, ancient Greek philosophers such as Aristotle thought that the nature of some objects was to remain at rest and that it took force to get them to move and continue moving. And all of this misunderstanding was because they didn't consider friction separately. We now know that once you eliminate friction, an object in motion tends to remain in motion. There will be a lecture video on this specifically. And finally, we wrap up this chapter with a short discussion on Newton's law of universal gravitation and centripetal force. Although there is a lot we can do with the law of universal gravitation, centripetal force, and centripetal acceleration, which we covered in kinematics, and using these, we could describe orbital motions of planets. Even though we could do all this in the interest of time, we will have to skip detailed discussions. I do encourage you to look up something called Kepler's laws of planetary motion and how that is related to Newton's law of universal gravitation. But um, there won't be any homework questions or exam questions on those. So, Assignments on chapter 3 are broken up into section groupings as with chapter 2. Please look at the outline in the canvas modules and we address our sensation of forces and Newton's third law in the essay assignment. Chapter 3 concludes unit 1, mechanics 1, which gives us the basic tools we need to describe our mechanical universe. Or if you prefer, the mechanical aspects of our universe. I hope you have fun with this chapter and bye.